Dios Pyros Virgin Iana, Wikipedia article audio. Dios Pyros Mosiri S.F. Blake. Dios Pyros Virgin Iana is a persimmon species commonly called the American persimmon, common persimmon, eastern persimmon, simmon, possum wood, possum apples, or sugar plum. It ranges from southern Connecticut slash Long Island to Florida, and west to Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Iowa. The tree grows wild but has been cultivated for its fruit and wood since prehistoric times by Native Americans. Description Distribution Dios Pyros Virgin Iana grows through 20 m, in well-drained soil. In summer, this species produces fragrant flowers which are dioecious, so one must have both male and female plants to obtain fruit. Most cultivars are parthenocarpic. The flowers are pollinated by insects and wind. Fruiting typically begins when the tree is about six years old. The fruit is round or oval and usually orange-yellow, sometimes bluish, and from 2 to 6 centimeters in diameter. In the U.S. South and Midwest, the fruits are referred to as simply persimmons or simmons, and are popular in desserts and cuisine. Commercial varieties include the very productive Early Golden, the productive John Rick, Miller, Woolbright, and the Ennis, a seedless variety. Another nickname of the American persimmon, date plum also refers to a persimmon species found in South Asia, Dios Pyros lotus. It is a small tree usually 30 through 80 feet in height, with a short, slender trunk and spreading, often pendulous branches, which form a broad or narrow, round-topped canopy. The roots are thick, fleshy, and stoloniferous. This species as has a shrubby growth form. This plant has oval entire leaves, and unisexual flowers on short stalks. In the male flowers, which are numerous, the stamens are 16 in number and arranged in pairs, the female flowers are solitary, with traces of stamens, and a smooth ovary with one ovule in each of the eight cells the ovary is surmounted by four styles which are hairy at the base. The fruit stalk is very short, bearing a subglobose fruit an inch in diameter or a bit larger, of an orange-yellow color, ranging to bluish, and with a sweetish astringent pulp. It is surrounded at the base by the persistent calyx lobes, which increase in size as the fruit ripens. The astringency renders the fruit somewhat unpalatable, but after it has been subjected to the action of frost, or has become partially rotted or bled like a meddler, its flavor is improved. The tree is very common in the South Atlantic and Gulf states, and attains its largest size in the basin of the Mississippi River. Its habitat is southern, it appears along the coast from Connecticut to Florida. West of the Alleghenies it is found in southern Ohio and along through southeastern Iowa and southern Missouri, when it reaches Louisiana, eastern Kansas, and Oklahoma it becomes a mighty tree, 115 feet high. Uses Its fossil remains have been found in Miocene rocks of Greenland and Alaska and in Cretaceous formations in Nebraska. Dios Pyros virgin Iana is believed to be an evolutionary remnant that was consumed by the megafauna that roamed the North American continent until 10,000 years ago and would have eaten the fruit, assisting in its dispersal. However, as it is attractive to raccoons, rodents, and smaller animals, the loss of large grazing herbivores and omnivores in historical times has not seriously affected the tree's survival strategy as compared to Kentucky coffee tree and Osage orange which are inedible to most extant wildlife and saw their ranges greatly diminish without mastodons and other dispersal agent fauna.
A 2015 study supports the notion that elephants would have been a more effective disperser of the seeds than living North American mammals. Cultivation The peculiar characteristics of its fruit have made the tree well known. This fruit is a globular berry, with variation in the number of seeds, sometimes with eight and sometimes without any. It bears at its apex the remnants of the styles and sits in the enlarged and persistent calyx. It ripens in late autumn, is pale orange with a red cheek, often covered with a slight glaucous bloom. One joke among southerners is to induce strangers to taste unripe persimmon fruit, as its very astringent bitterness is shocking to those unfamiliar with it. Folklore states that frost is required to make it edible, but fully ripened fruit lightly shaken from the tree or found on the ground below the tree is sweet, juicy, and delicious. The peculiar astringency of the fruit is due to the presence of a tannin similar to that of cinchona. The seeds were used as buttons during the American Civil War. The fruit is high in vitamin C. The unripe fruit is extremely astringent. The ripe fruit may be eaten raw, cooked or dried. Molasses can be made from the fruit pulp. A tea can be made from the leaves and the roasted seed is used as a coffee substitute. Other popular uses include desserts such as persimmon pie, persimmon pudding, or persimmon candy. The fruit is also fermented with hops, cornmeal, or wheat bran into a sort of beer or made into brandy. The wood is heavy, strong, and very close-grained and used in wood turning. The tree prefers light, sandy, well-drained soil, but will grow in rich, southern, bottom lands. It can be grown in northern Ohio only with the greatest of care and in southern Ohio its fruit is never edible until after frost. The tree is greatly inclined to vary in the character and quality of its fruit, in size this varies from that of a large cherry to a small apple. Some trees in the south produce fruit that is delicious without the action of the frost, while adjoining trees produce fruit that never becomes edible. It was brought to England before 1629 and is cultivated, but rarely if ever ripens its fruit. It is easily raised from seed and can also be propagated from stolons, which are often produced in great quantity. The tree is hardy in the south of England and in the Channel Islands. In respect to the power of making heartwood, the persimmon rarely develops any heartwood until it is nearly 100 years old. This heartwood is extremely close-grained and almost black, resembling ebony. It is a common misconception persimmon fruit needs frost to ripen and soften, called bledding. Some, such as the early ripening varieties Piper and NC21, easily lose astringency and become completely free of it when slightly soft at the touch these are then very sweet, even in the British climate. On the other hand, some varieties remain astringent even when the fruit has become completely soft. Frost, however, destroys the cells within the fruit, causing it to rot instead of ripen. Only completely ripe and soft fruit can stand some frost it will then dry and become even sweeter. The same goes for the oriental persimmon, where early frost can severely damage a fruit crop. Bark, dark brown or dark gray, deeply divided into plates whose surface is scaly. Branchlets slender, zigzag, with thick pith or large pith cavity, at first light reddish brown and pubescent. They vary in color from light brown to ashy gray and finally become reddish brown, the bark somewhat broken by longitudinal fissures. Astringent and bitter, take caution when trying to identify bark in the winter, as there is another tree having similar appearance and characteristics, called black gum, or black tulpo.
Its bark is blackish, broken up into small, conspicuous, square, scaly blocks that sort of resemble alligator skin, wood, very dark, sapwood yellowish white, heavy, hard, strong and very close grained. Specific gravity, 0.7908, weight of cubic foot, 49.28 pounds. The heartwood is a true ebony. Forestry texts indicate that about a century of growth is required before a tree will produce a commercially viable yield of ebony wood, winter buds, ovate, acute, one-eighth of an inch long, covered with thick reddish or purple scales. These scales are sometimes persistent at the base of the branchlets, leaves, alternate, simple, four to six inches long, oval, narrowed or rounded or chordate at base, entire, acute or acuminate. They come out of the bud revolute, thin, pale, reddish-green, downy with ciliate margins, when full-grown are thick, dark green, shining above, pale and often pubescent beneath. In autumn they sometimes turn orange or scarlet, sometimes fall without change of color. Midrib broad and flat, primary veins opposite and conspicuous. Petioles stout, pubescent, one half to an inch in length, flowers, May, June, when leaves are half grown, dioecious, or rarely polygamous. Staminate flowers born in two to three flowered cymes, the pedicels downy and bearing two minute bracts. Pistil late flowers solitary, usually on separate trees, their pedicels short, recurved, and bearing two bractlets, calyx, usually four lobed, a crescent under the fruit. Corolla, greenish yellow or creamy white, tubular, four lobed, lobes imbricate in bud, stamens, 16, inserted on the corolla, in staminate flowers in two rows. Filaments short, slender, slightly hairy, anthers oblong, introrse, two celled, cells opening longitudinally. In pistil late flowers the stamens are eight with aborted anthers, rarely these stamens are perfect, pistil, ovary superior, conical, ultimately eight-celled, styles four, slender, spreading, stigma two-lobed, fruit, a juicy berry containing one to eight seeds, crowned with the remnants of the style and seated in the enlarged calyx, depressed globular, pale orange color, often red-cheeked, with slight bloom, turning yellowish-brown after freezing. Flesh astringent while green, sweet, and luscious when ripe.